Welcome to the Insight Podcast. Joining me on the show today is Dr. Kiran Agarwal. Kiran is a doctor with over 22 years medical experience who's now turning her attention to high performance. She's an executive coach who's helping people stay well, avoid burnout, and maximize their happiness. I talked to Kiran about why, despite our best efforts, we're still not happy. That disconnection between our actions and our values. Why we must get really clear on our purpose. What she's learned from her oldest and happiest patients, and much more. Right, before we start, I do have a small favour to ask. If you haven't already, please do hit the follow button wherever you're tuning into this episode. And then if you've been listening to the show for a while, I'd really appreciate it if you rated the show too. This can help more listeners discover the podcast and the insights from all of my amazing guests. Thank you. Okay, now for my conversation with Dr. Kieran Agarwal. Enjoy. Something I've been thinking about recently, which is how we kind of go through the stage of recognizing that the car, house, promotion, whatever it is, aren't necessarily bringing us that lasting happiness that we were told maybe when we were growing up uh, that they would. So we enter this other phase, right, that wasn't working. And I've heard that if I meditate, if I hike, if I read lots of self-help books, enter some big physical challenge like a marathon, something like that. So put in place all of those habits and have those goals in place instead. That will bring us happiness. And then sometimes we find that we do that for a couple of months, maybe a year longer, and we're still not feeling better. We're still not feeling happy, peaceful, content. What is going on here, Kieran, do you think? You have given a very big picture of how we have, you know, engineered our life and brought it to a stage where luckily that person has gone through all those things and they have had you know good things in life as you're saying family and a good setup like you know having a home and car and there is something which is missing and then they think okay yeah let's do something more and they get into this phase of okay let's meditate or marathon or you know hiking or music and sometimes not all the time sometimes there's still something missing I find that in my clinics you know people have got everything and working in an area uh, like Surrey where people actually do have you know lots of these things um, and still not happy It, it, it has crossed my mind a lot of times like and I come from India. So for me, it was like, if you have all those things, then you certainly should be happy and should be not longing for something in your life. But then I realize that it's probably the, the difference, and I've read books on this, is they're not aligned with the real core values. They probably have not distilled their life's purpose to the point that when they make decisions in their life, that they're congruent with that purpose. So they are making decisions, they are doing things, but they're not sure why they're doing it. Why are they moving towards a thing? Is that marathon just to be part of the community or is that marathon for something else? I mean, these things are (laughs) forever, forever in my brain. Like, why is this person has got, most of the things which we think should, t- you know, we ticked off all the boxes and still are, hmm, I'm here in front of you, doctor. Now, why have I got, mm. you know, this anxiety? Why I am not able to sleep? Why am I putting on weight? And you're like, okay, let, let's just get into this mode of why is that? And that's what I find, like, they haven't aligned themselves with their, their own internal their deeper core values and their 
their mission, their purpose. And it's not very big. It's just that they haven't looked into those spaces. And these are things which are not very fancy. You know, you can't, you can't, you know, make a, I don't know, like you, you can see a shiny car or you can have a score on a marathon timer. You can't, you can't put these things into that phase. So it's, it's a little bit more abstract. And that's probably the reason, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's my, no, that's what it, my thoughts it just, are. It just resonates so much. Um, it, it does just feel like we, we, we replace certain goals that aren't serving us with other goals that we've been told um, have brought other people happiness and peace. So we think, well, well, I'll do that as well. So I'll also get yes. the app that um, tracks how many times I meditate. And if I do that for 200, 300 days, well, surely I'm just going to wake up and just be like the Buddha, just enlightened and perfectly at peace with the world. Or yeah, you get in the gym, like you said, and you're, you're training hard or something. It's as I said, it's just something that I think about a lot. It's like that we've, we've, we we get all smug with ourselves because we're like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I've, I've let go of the, the, the capital, the capitalist, um, I don't know, treadmill, the hedonic treadmill. Like we're getting on and we're just trying to find the next thing that's going to make me happy. And I know it's not a promotion. I know it's not a new house, whatever it is. So it must be these other things. But still, we have then just replaced those habits, those goals, with other goals. That's still not working. And I think what you said that, well, it's just still not aligning with our, our intentions and, and our values. And I think you know, it's called the psyche, isn't it? As in our soul, is like our inner soul, that in you know what what really makes us individual and what we're interested in, what we want to achieve. Um, and then it's so interesting that you say that you're seeing people in your clinic that have got you know all the they they seem like they should be happy because they've got the fancy car and the wife or whatever it is, but it's still not working for them. <laughs> so before we get more into no, go I mean, on, Kieran. Sorry, I'll tell you. I'll yeah. tell you a short story. Sorry. I had, and I, I, I talk about this, um, in a, in a like um, ex- way of examples, but also I am aware that as a doctor, I have to be very careful about sharing details from my clinics. So I had a gentleman who, let's say, was a millionaire, and he had put in aside a million for extension of his house. And he is sitting in front of me, completely distraught that he didn't think about how he's going to put in the furniture because he had not accounted for the furniture in that one million. And how do you solve that problem? And that's because he has thought that he will... I mean, these are the things which make me puzzled. Like this person has got so much of capital to put in for extension of his house, but he is unhappy because he hasn't got the furniture money now to put in that in extension. Yeah. Like just never enough. It will just, it will never be enough, will it? Because once you, once you earn no. a million pounds, then no. you want to earn 10 million pounds. Once you get the four bedroom house, you want the five bedroom yeah. house. <laughs> it's just never ending, isn't it? So you've you mentioned a couple of times in your clinic and the yeah. people that you see. Um, let's before we go to kind of go deeper, maybe into finding values and purpose and how how, how we go about that. I think it'd be useful to, for people to know your your background and what you do now as well, um, because you've been in medicine for a long time, haven't you? Um, over twenty years in medicine. So um, what? Well, I've kind of taken some words out of your mouth there, haven't I, to explain that you've been in, doing this for a long time. But I'm interested to hear what, what being a doctor has taught yeah. you about people, um, your journey with lifestyle medicine as well, the work that you're doing now. Like, how have we got to this point with Kieran? And then we can use that as a bit of a springboard into the rest of the conversation. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I'm a doctor and I love being a doctor. Uh, I've been a doctor. I mean, I wanted to become a doctor since I was probably twelve and thirteen. You know, first essay you have, you 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 get to write in the school. What what's your aim in life? And for me, it was always doctor. So I'm very kind of grateful, and I feel fortunate to be able to do what I'm doing. And I never imagined 
working as a doctor in England, in London, to be honest. This is like <laughs> better than my dreams. <laughs> um, and I, I have gone through my journey of understanding people. So I initially started as a specialist. So I started as an ENT. And then I realized I want to know more about the human body. I don't it's not that I don't like ENT, I just want to know more about human body. So I became a general practitioner GP. So now I work both as a GP as well as an ENT specialist. And then slowly and slowly, I realized that people are coming to clinics with problems which haven't resolved, and they have had all the tests and investigations, and they're still not having the results, the outcomes which we want them to have, and that is to feel better and just be you know, get on with their life. As a doctor, for me, the only motivation for me is that whatever the problem my, my, that person has, they should be able to just get on with their life and I'm there to fix it or I'm there to help them. Uh, and then the other struggle for me as a doctor was in this modern medicine, there's a lot of, I don't know whether you have noticed in your personal or with your friends or, you know, elderly relatives and people like that, is that they have got what we call a prescription cascade. So people are being over-treated, over-medicalized, over-prescribed. So lots of lots of prescribing going on. And 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 this is all down to over-diagnosis and all this stuff. And I'm like, what I'm going to do with these things? I have not been trained in in wherever whatever you know courses, maybe BS and you know all the masters and stuff I've done. I am not able to serve the person who is sat in front of me. I am not just going to prescribe them the pills and and then I'm sorry, all your tests are fine. I couldn't just do that. And that's when I went into this mode of lifestyle medicine and uh, functional medicine and all those uh, further training. And I did that. I thought, yeah, I've got <laughs> everything now what I need to help with my patients. But still got stuck because knowing that that this will help, but actually... It has to be implemented by them. Yes. It's not like a pill yeah. they can just take. With a pill, I can prescribe it, they can take it, and they forget. I know my patients forget half of the times what we give them or don't take them. Um, but this was harder because this is something which they have to do for themselves, not me. So they are coming with chronic pain, chronic headaches, chronic tummy symptoms, or you know rashes, and these are not getting better. And you're like, okay, so you... You know, I need you to help you, but I can show you the way. And that's when I realize, okay, it's it's bigger than just prescribing or doing a test. This 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 whole thing is is it's, you know I can't solve this problem just by the training I have had. This is much um, much more, you know, going into people's. Um, you know, how they think, what is stopping them, why are they not able to do the things which will help them. They even know what will help them, but they are not able to do it. And that's what led me into all these things. Because as a child, I always wanted to kind of make people better, but then I got stuck. Like, why aren't they get better? Even though I know what they know, make them yes. better, even though yeah. they know what yeah. they're making better. We know, we know that more <laughs> sleep and exercise and eating the right thing will make us feel better. And, you know, it's... I feel like I've gone on the bit of that journey on social media. Like a couple of years ago, I was saying, well, you need to sleep for eight hours and this is how you sleep better. And we should be eating more whole plant food. So this is how you can incorporate more. And it's like, everyone knows this. People know this stuff, but it doesn't stop them putting it in place. And I know all the stuff. I know all the stuff about sleeping better and not spending too much time on my phone. But I still do. I still just fall into really bad habits and I go, Oh, you get so frustrated with yourself. And it's only then since more reflection and looking at this, why have I got this pattern? And that has taken some, some painful digging into myself and thinking back to growing up and thinking back to, yeah, just the, the, the patterns that I'm in and why, the thought process that I have and things like shame and worth. All this stuff pops up and you're like, what has this got to do with me feeling like I can't get off Instagram reels, but then you notice all of those um, connections. And I just think it's so interesting. You, you're talking about, you, you learned about lifestyle medicine. It's like, oh, right, look at me. I, I know how to cure all my patients now. 
<laughs> I just tell them this stuff and then it'll all be, it'll be fine. They'll all be cured of their diseases, but it just doesn't quite work like yeah. that because they don't put it into place. And that's what lifestyle medicine is, isn't it? And I, the idea that we can prevent, manage, and, and maybe even cure some of the, the, the most common chronic diseases with lifestyle interventions like sleep, exercise, nutrition, st- stress management. Is that, is that right? And that's what you were really interested in. Well, that is that is very helpful in yes. lots of chronic illnesses, and and I say piling up of illnesses because say somebody has come to me in their like late thirties and forties with blood pressure, and then three years later, well, I will see that they are going to have another blood pressure pill, and then they maybe cholesterol is a bit high, and then a few years later maybe their sugar levels are going up. And then they will have fatty liver. So it's like accumulating over time. I'm like, no, 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 no. We have to stop it. We, we have to stop the first time we find something. That's where we have to put the brakes on. And it's interesting you say that. And I'm no saint. I have had my journey myself. I, you know, going through this, like, why is this not happening? That it helped me to reflect on myself like yeah i also have some of those behaviors and the and if if i if i'm not able to do this for me my personal problems were like okay i'm i'm active in the sense i'm not never sitting down for too long yeah okay we all have desk jobs and we do have to sometimes sit for hours but i try to walk and get up and stretch and all stuff but i needed to do strength training once i hit 40s and I'm like, strength training, oh God, my muscles are so blah, blah. And then you just keep putting off. I'm like, if I'm finding it difficult, knowing all those things, how can I expect in a 10-minute or 15-minute consultation, yes. I can change somebody's life? Even after going through so much of learning and knowing and not still able to apply. So I'm not making it sound easy, but I know that... It's, it's, it's a lot of work, but it, this is the place where I feel it's worth investing in. And in terms of lifestyle pillars, yes, you're absolutely right. And the way I see it is that they are helping to function. They're helping a body to function. So good nutrition, good sleep, you know, right amount of physical activity, not having, um, you know, toxic substances like smoking alcohol and drugs and all that stuff. Um, and toxic people as well let's put it that way (laughs) and also positive connections and you know and then comes like okay I want my body to function better I want my body to work better I want my mind to work better Mm -hmm. and that's when what for why yeah what for and that's that's what the purpose and values and mission and alignment all this come for like what are you Mm. what are you doing this for and unless that's clear I think personally, it's harder for us to put all the effort because it's easy to sit on the sofa and watch a Netflix show. It's easy to put in some extra scoops of ice cream in your bowl. It's easy not to go for a walk on a rainy day. But if you have that what for, if you know what, why you, you know, what is that you are doing this for, then that's that's the that's the push. And this is this echoes what. A conversation that I had with two sports psychologists not long ago, saying the same thing. Yeah, connect. Like when we're oh, talking really? about, I was, I was saying, how do I stay motivated to go, keep going to the gym and keep going for a run on a wet, cold evening? And it's like connect with your why. Re- remember why are you doing this? Who is that person that you want to be? Um, another framing that I've heard is, what would tomorrow you thank you for? Like Sam tomorrow, what would he be glad that I've done? Would he be glad that I've sat on the sofa for two hours? Or would he be glad that I went for a run for an hour and then sat on the sofa for an hour? I'd probably be feeling better if I went for the run. I always feel better after I've done something. Yeah. Even though it's really horrible at the time. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and it's a future projection. And sometimes people with this purpose and all these things, people project much, much more like, when you are 70 or 80, hope we reach that age, then when you look back, what, what will you think, like, what's the right things I've done? You start with that health piece, don't you? 
because you have the your your happy program, which is all about this stuff. Um, which, look, why you start with the health piece? Is it because then you're kind of you're much more likely to put in place all the other things after that? Why start with health? And also, I'm interested to know with someone with your experience and everything, what are some of the the really easy, um, like what's it called, the low hanging fruit that we can pull when it comes to our health? What are some of the things that we can put in place really quickly that could really quickly help us feel better? Well, that's a great question. Um, so health for me, I mean, that's how I started my journey. You know, I wanted people to be healthy and enjoy their life and just get on and do whatever they want to do in life. And for them, health is needed. I'm sorry to break the news that <laughs> you need to be healthy, do whatever you want to do in life. And it it has been, you know, like some people say North Star, that has been my North Star, keep people healthy, you know, and, and people in my family are fed up of me, to be honest. Like, you know, they're like, can I have extra chips? No. Can I have an extra scoop of ice cream? No. Like, <laughs> So it, it's something which is so just like in every part, it's like every part of my body, like my DNA, like, you know, we have to be healthy. I'm not saying that I'm super healthy, but I'm saying basics of health we have to follow. So that's me. And plus happy, I have designed it based on happy, like health, lifestyle, as well as the coaching elements I bring into it. So I combine the two and H was the first one. So it made sense to include health as the first pillar of my program. Um, in terms of the three things and low-hanging fruits, the way I look at it, I usually, like, I'm, I'm somebody who doesn't like generalizations. So I tend to prompt people. So if I have got somebody who I feel that they're ready to adopt the lifestyle change approach, then I would just pose a question. And I think as a coach, we are usually get to asking questions rather than giving advice, because if we give advice, it's never taken. We know that. So it's generally a question like, these are the things which will help you, you know, like, you know, changing, you know, changing the way you're sleeping or having more friends or doing something you enjoy or having more water. So it depends on the, how the consultation has, where, has gone. Then I've picked up and then I will tell them the things which I think would help them and then ask them to pick up. As you previously said, most of the things we already know. And, you know, I'm surprised when I ask them the question, what would help you? You tell me what yeah. where, they exactly know it. But, but putting it in place is just a different story, isn't it? Putting it in place is a different story. It, it's, that's a different story. So for me, it's like, OK, if somebody has come with kidney stones, and you are going through all the management of the kidney stones and things, and then you come down to this, okay, lifestyle element of it. Like, you know, these things would help for you, like drinking more water, making sure you're going to the toilet enough, making sure you eat more of the plant-based diet and stuff like that, having less of the alcohol and things. Which one you think, or which couple of, which of these things you think would be, you would apply and they're like, I think I have to drink less alcohol. I drink more water. You know, then my job's done. If they have answered that, then yeah. I don't have to advise them. It's like if they, they come are to their own conclusion. Yeah, and that, that's coaching, isn't it? Coaching one on one is not just saying you you should do this. Yeah. It's like, well, what do you think? And we have the answers inside of us, don't we? If we just take the time to to pause and reflect. So why is that? I mean, let's come all the way back to the the start of the conversation. What's going on with people's purpose, values? Why Why is it that, I mean, I feel like this at the moment. I feel like I'm not quite clear on my purpose. I'm not always acting in alignment with my values. So I've got all the things in place, which mean on paper, I should be really, really happy all the time because I exercise, I meditate, I sleep fairly well most of the time. Um, I eat really well. I, I'm surrounded by friends, friends and family. But there are days and then sometimes longer periods where I just don't, I don't feel good. I don't feel myself. And it's especially true in the past six months or so, especially not feeling that great. And I think it is because of this purpose and worrying about the future and not acting in the way that actually is in alignment, as I said already, um, with my values. So that seems to be like a common story, doesn't it? So how is it that I could get more clear on my purpose and values? 
Well, thank you, first of all, sharing what you're going through, because it takes a lot of courage to say, you know, on paper, I should have everything. I have got everything covered and I should feel perfect. I should feel 100%. And this is what I see often, like people have got everything, but they have still got problems. And this is, this takes courage to admit it. So thank you for that. At the same time, helping somebody go through their values and their alignment, their purpose and all those things takes a little bit of work. So usually we start with the values uh, piece first. If that's what is causing problems, we think, of how you're feeling or how somebody is feeling a little bit off, like, okay, I've got everything, but what, what is the missing piece here? So we start with the values and the values um, assessment can be done. Usually I like to do it in person, like it can be online like this, but um, but not like an AI doing it for you or you're cl- clicking lots of quiz questions and things like that. And the reason is that we, it's not just answering the questions, it's about the reflection of each part as well. And that piece, if you try to get there quickly, because this is something which the person is going to use for their lifetime. Obviously, values can change a little bit, but most of the time they don't. But, but what do we mean by values, first of all? It means what feels good for us, what feels right for us. So two people, uh, if I have to explain in terms of analog, so two people say sat by, side by side watching a good movie and it's a, and they're both enjoying the movies. Yeah, it's not that they are they are not enjoying it. Both of them are liking the scene. But when they are sitting down and they want, say, a drink, they may not have the same drink. They may want two different drinks. And why is that? Because they like the taste or flavor or whatever, or you know, one might like water, the other might like beer. Like my husband will have beer when he's watching me, and I'll have water. I mean, that's a different story about health, but what I'm saying is that. We can have two different drinks while watching the same thing. So values is like, what do I like about this? So, for example, you know, some people like to have lots of collaboration. They like being with people. And some people like to be independent and they want to focus a bit differently. Some people like to bring, you know, lots of good to the world. Some people like to make the world progress by doing little inventions and stuff. So it's just knowing yourself a bit better through values is that your inner stuff is like that thing which um, I think it was more evident when we were kids. We knew, like we would say no to something when we didn't like it. And we would be very vocal about it sometimes. And somebody like me would probably lie on the floor crying if I if I got something which I did not like. But then we were told that, okay, what everybody likes is what you should like. And then it got, gets lost. It gets buried. And all as a coaching, you know, sessions and stuff, what we do is to bring that to the surface. So it's already there. And the reason why there is this, what we call is cognitive dissonance, is like when you are like doing it, but you're like, mm, I'm not sure about this. I'm not enjoying it. But others are. So that that is like, like, why am I not? Because you never did. You thought you will enjoy it because others are. But you, you, for you, it doesn't matter that much. For example, you, you may not like, I don't know, like even in, in the sense of dressing, like if you are wearing something, you may want somebody who wants comfortable clothes to somebody who likes more style. You know, it can be different. And that's absolutely fine. But we don't see that for decision making. So those are the things which help us to understand ourselves. And how it helps is that when we internally know what we like, then we make the decisions according to that. So then we're we're like feeling better. And that is called alignment. If we're getting more comfortable with the fact, I I know what makes me feel good and it's different to my friends, but that's okay. And I'm going to do more of of that. And yeah, the, the example that comes into mind, like, Growing up, I had some really, really good nights out with my friends, you know, that did involve alcohol. Uh, We had a lot of fun. But 
Percentage wise, I'm not sure how many good nights I had compared to nights where I was like, I don't really want to be here, but just everyone else is out. So I'm going with the, going along with everyone else. Whereas actually, I would have preferred just, just having friends around at my house and a few quiet drinks and just, I don't know, playing on the PlayStation, something like that. But everyone else is going out, so you go along with it. Um, so is it useful to think back to when you were a child and what you really loved. I, I remember being a teenager and I was teaching myself get, get the, um, how to play the guitar and I absolutely loved sitting down and learning the chords to a song that I, I already knew and just playing along. To, and I would just obsessively do it for hours on end. I don't know how many hours I'd spend in the evening, two or three hours trying to play that, you know, that get certain guitar part of the strokes or block party or someone like that. I absolutely loved it. And so I think, yeah, sometimes you just need to think, what did you enjoy when you were younger? Was it building dens and climbing trees and getting outside? Was it being quiet and, and drawing on your own, reading stories? What was it? Absolutely. And, and that's a great example, which you've shared. So can I ask you something? When you were, you know, doing that thing with guitar, did you ever feel that you have, you know, done two hours on it? Or it yeah, was yeah, yeah. After, you, yeah. So, so it's so like in, know, in flow, yeah. is it? Like, yeah, that's you know, exactly lo- the point. Lose all sense of time. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Lose all sense of time. That's exactly, that's what the brain does. And that's cognitive changes. Because when you're enjoying something, the time just passes. And that's what we have to bring in. Like, what it, and this is just this is one piece like this is your action what you were doing being in flow similarly the values are like okay if somebody likes to be say compassionate at work they have become a manager and their boss is telling them that they have to fire somebody they probably will feel quite you know tense about it because th- their value is compassion they can do it with compassion but say they're not supported to do that and they have to just go and tell them like sorry mate by for now, they probably will not be able to sleep that night. So it's it's just knowing, okay, I am this person is what helps us. And then purpose is something simple. As you said, it doesn't have to be big. Not, not all of us have to change it, the whole world. Even if we change somebody small, one person's world, that's fine. But at the end of the day, we are here to enjoy ourselves. And And that can be by cooking something or playing a piece of music or sitting and reading books and having the time to reflect and talk to others about like we are doing now. Um, This is what I enjoy. (laughs) So thank you for having me. Is that, okay, I have done so much and I now want to share with people. And that makes me happy. And, and, and And that's exactly what my job day to day is like. Okay, I'm listening to what people are bringing and then sharing you know, we come to a shared management plan and things like that. So at the end of the day, these are these sound way big things and stuff. But actually, if we go back and look at those things when we did not get conditioned through the external expectations, through what everybody else thinks we should be doing, we should be liking, then, you know, we are on a much, I don't know, it's called a higher self and something called psychosynthesis is what comes to my mind i don't know if you've heard of that of course yeah so psychosynthesis i'm guessing to do with kind of being in connection with your soul is that right like your inner so 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 it's like we have to be realistic as well so if you imagine um x y axis uh so psychosynthesis is part of advanced coaching skills where you are helping people to understand all these things, but mm. also in a real sense. So yes, we can't do without, you know, real life, you know, you know, going to work, having money, all those things, because we can't live in that place always, like just <laughs> playing the guitar all the time. Sorry, Sam, break to you. <laughs> so we have to be somewhere in the middle. So if you imagine the X, Y axis, the X is the, the more, um, Quantity, quantitative, um, say, for mm, example, like more materialistic stuff, well. stuff, things which help us to get yeah. along. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you for the word. So the more practical stuff, but 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 a bit more materialistic, shall we say. And then on the Y side is the spiritual stuff or the quality stuff, yeah? 
So if somebody is very much aligned along the x-axis, where they're like, okay, I've got the best job, I'm very good in the workplace, I also have a family, and I'm perfect. For them to look at somebody who's not doing that, they're lazy, they're disorganized, they don't know what to do with their life, yeah? On the other hand, if somebody is very much aligned along the y-axis, they're happy all the time, they're there to help, they're just like, okay, you know, they're not like, they don't want to like really get into timetable or anything, but then their life is probably a bit of a mess. They're, they're probably no money and, uh, you know, so we have to be somewhere. Sorry, I'm losing your voice again. Like being in the, you know, a, a monk in the Himalayas or something who spends 10, 20 years and yeah, they might be yeah, yeah. Uh, completely at peace, but yeah. who are they serving by doing that? Uh, only themselves and actually, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. And, and that may be right. And I think um, because so much interest in biology and you, <laughs> you're a science teacher yourself, but the thing is that we are not exactly, you know, like animals. We can't be. We, are, we have got this big forebrain, which forces us to think. And then these modern interruptions with all these people wanting our attention and stuff. It just is a very complex world we are navigating every day. And then forgetting what actually genuinely is making us happen. That's most of the time simple things. But we can't articulate these things because we are either forcing ourselves to go along the x-axis. And once we go there, then we are finding ourselves, oh, some shock happens because life is always giving us some problems. And, and then we realize, actually, we have to get help from others. We have to build connections. We have to have mm -hmm. that spiritual element, like what are we doing this all for? Yes, I'm getting the money and all the stuff, but what is it for? What, am I, what use is it? Is it just to show people off that I've got a big car and big house? Or is it serving any other purpose than that? So. I think it's 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 environment is quite difficult because it's constantly presenting us all these very addictive and shiny things, and and that's where yeah I think sure. we get lost. So how can someone really connect with their purpose as well? Is this again about that future self thinking? By the time I'm eighty, what what exactly is the life that I want to have lived? Um, do we look that long term? How do we get clear? Because we talked about getting clear on our values, thinking about back to childhood, what really puts us in a flow state, what brings us joy. But what about when we look to the future? Um, how do we get clear on our purpose? And I like the fact that you um, gave that example of it. It doesn't have to be this huge, huge goal of, I don't know, saving a million lives or something. You start a charity that helps X amount of children, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be that big, does it? It can be much smaller, but but still, how do we figure out what our purpose is? That's a bit of a big question, isn't it, Kieran? <laughs> <laughs> it is, and all of our individuals, and we have to look at our own, you know, yeah. what, what do we want from our life? And that, you know, what is that, what we what would make us happy if we are at reach that age? Now, I do have patients who are in their 80s and 90s and actually some of them really, mm. really fit and happy. And I, being chatty doctor, I will, if I have got a couple of minutes of time, I will always ask them, what is that you have done in your yeah, life that you are so secret? fit and you are so happy? Because, yeah, that's, that's the secret I keep asking. And you know consistently the same oh, answers. Go on, that I am living my life. I just live. And I ask them, what do you mean by your living? He says, I do the same thing every day. And what is that? I get up, I, you know, cook my own meals. I, and, you know, some of them do gardening still. You know, I had an 87-year-old who mows one and a half acres of land, lawn. Um, they go for a walk. They go for uh, events. You know, they have got... Like I had a, he probably was 83 or 84 year old and he sings in a choir. A choir, a choir. How yeah, do you say it? Yeah. Choir? Yeah, choir. And he sets up all the, you know, we were struggling with technology. He sets up the technology for his mates so that they can sing. You know, they just do these basic things every day. 
and connect to people. And I think they have families, some of them with modern living, they live close or far. So I think most people I find in my clinics who are happy and fit, they're not doing something big. They're just doing the small things and being part of a group and just, you know, not, not moaning about things. They just constantly tell me, we are so lucky, doctor, that we have got this life. I think being grateful and then accepting that problems are part of life. At the same time, just getting up and doing a things. beautifully simple life seems to be the goal, doesn't it? Just we don't have to overcomplicate it, do we? Well, but I, we're, but I we're don't... told the opposite. We're told to have these huge goals, earn X amount of money, get to a certain status, whatever it is. Instead of just what what are the simple things like? If you can wake up, enjoy a coffee, get in the garden, pick some vegetables, cook a delicious meal. And I don't know, move your body a bit, spend some time with friends and family. Like, what else is there? It seems like enough to me, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, it definitely does. I actually also have somebody, and this is a lady in mid eighties, and she does. And she is so <laughs> happy. I can't tell you. And she's so fit. She comes to me in the ENT clinic, and I've asked her. The only thing she does is. Every morning, she gets up at five o'clock and does right. a little so bit of purpose the straight away in the morning. Yeah. In the morning, she does that for a couple of hours. She said, I get my walk what and I get my street clean. I mean, she's not on newspapers. No. She's not on social media. She's just a happy bunny going about her life. And she is like, I get bowed by these things. Like, you know, I am seeing people in my clinics who are that age who we are talking about, they aren't doing anything big. And, and you know, they, they all get so, like, why is the doctor yeah. asking me this question? Yeah. Just, oh, I can't remember who said it, but just kind of make, just the goal is just to make your little corner of the universe a little bit happier and a little bit more, yeah, together, content, whatever it is. I can't remember who said it, but yeah, we don't have to think so big. Just your little corner of the universe, look after it. Do you find that, some people, when they do this work, they are thinking, right, values, I need to get more clear on them, purpose, um, that they almost take a bit of a step backwards. I feel like that's what I'm going through at the moment, to be honest, where I'm kind of like, you've done dug that little bit deeper and then it's like, oh, right, all this stuff has kind of come up and it just kind of, it's like a, it's a bit like a punch in the face. You're like, whoa, you're taken aback. Because you realise that oh, right, there, there is some work to do. This is going to take some effort. Um, do you see that in other people as well, that it feels like they've taken a step backwards, but you know that that's, that's the, then the, uh, the, the springboard to jump forward? Oh, well, really? I've seen it in me <laughs> and some of my clients, because I think in our, like, as professionals, our journey is supposed yes. to be like a big career graph, isn't it? Just keep going up and up and up. And you're like, okay, I'm going up. And this is, again, this is something which we are fed from external sources that if you are of this, you know, if you are in this state, then you should be this. And then this, and then you're like, okay, I've reached this. And it doesn't feel that this is what I am enjoying. And it's not that it's not a good job it's just that i don't like it you know some other people it might be perfect and and then you have to rewind and think okay where do i find my you know things where do i find what i enjoy and then just reflect back and then i call it readjust recalibrate um and once we do that like now i'm like perfect in my touch wood <laughs> I'm in a perfect place where I'm like, okay, doing a bit of this and a bit of that. And then also sharing what I am seeing so that if it helps somebody, and that brings me joy. And that is something, because I, the main reason is that people are made to believe, as you were saying, that they have to keep going on and on and on and next thing and next thing and next thing. And sometimes they have it all. Sometimes they don't need more. Sometimes they just or look have at the it celebrities all. that are rich and famous, and you think, oh, "I'd love to be like them." Imagine that, and then you see the interview, and you just hear that they are miserable. And actually, what's going on inside of their head? You would not want to trade lives with them because they are tortured and they're not happy. Um, yeah, 
it feels like, well, I, I keep hearing more about you know, the happiness is a, is a process. Happiness is not a goal. We can't get to the day where suddenly we're happy and then everything's fine and we've ticked it off the list. No, it's a, an ongoing process. And I like the way you talked about you have to keep recalibrating and adjusting because, well, what makes me happy now is not the same thing that made me happy five years ago. It's completely different. It's completely different to 10 years ago. Exactly. And just that change. And it's, it's pretty surprising, isn't it? How quickly, even in a couple of years, you, you feel like a different person, but then Again, we have these voices from around us, don't we? Kind of saying, oh, well, you've changed, Sam, and you didn't used to be like this. And it's like, no, I, I didn't, but I'm starting to settle into what I think is, is making me happy and be more comfortable about saying no to things that I know, actually, I used to say yes to, but I don't enjoy them. So I'm not going to, I'm going to try within reason, you know, because of course we have to be a little bit flexible and we have to cater to certain people, but as much as possible to just be doing the things that I want to do and less of the, less of the, uh, stuff that, does, that I don't want to do. <laughs> no, well done. And again, the problem is I think the time yeah. is limited, isn't it? We don't have, li- no, no, like we don't have like more than 24 hours and, and just for functioning body, for functioning mind, we need like eight hours of sleep and one hour of exercise and, you know, another couple of hours of doing other things. And then you can't have everything and then you have to work as well. So it's not possible to have everything. So it's just like realistic mindset of, okay, there are certain things which I have to do so that I can consistently keep doing those things over a period of time rather than just pushing myself through this one big thing for now, which sometimes we do, but then, you know, we can't keep doing that back to back. And 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 that is what causes people to burn out, frankly and honestly, is that when they think they are invincible, they can just keep going without looking at, what's making them unhappy, making them stressed. And that's why I sometimes say, actually, when you're stressed, that's a good thing because that is telling you that there's something you need to review here. There's something which we need to look into this. That may be something which is useful for you in the future and you have to keep going and then we have to manage stress in a different way. At the same time, it may be that you are not going to get anything out of this process. You might have to put a hard stop. So it's just... It's, it's not like you have got a formula and you can just use it. And that is what, you know, is, is, it sounds like a less effective strategy because people want something yes. like, okay, give me this. Like, for example, give me the pill and make me better. I'm like, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. We have to constantly be in touch with ourselves. We have to be constantly in touch with our surroundings. And then figure out, okay, this is making me feel good. This is not making me feel good. And once we know those basics, and once then we can review it much more easier. So the whole thing, this exercise of values, purpose, alignment, and things does, is that helps us to make our decisions with more clarity and less of that mental agony, like, oh, what do I do now? I've been invited to an event and I want to do this, but... I, I want to go there as well. And, but if you're not clear, then you are like in that stage. Or I want to eat an ice cream. It's a sunny day, but I already had two chocolates. You know, all this decision making <laughs> is something which is hard. And that's why we falter yes. to an easy one. Yeah. But if we know ourselves, if we know ourselves, then we probably will be like, hmm, no. I don't really want to do that. So how do I now not do it or do it, whatever yeah. that answer And that seems to be the approach is. of some of those really, really effective people. And I like to think happy people as well that you see in life, that they're just very, they know what they want and they're just doing that and they can make quick decisions. Bam, bam, bam. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. And just getting stuff done and, and feeling good about it. I like that that was such a um, balanced viewpoint of it. You know, when you were talking about how there were moments of, you might go through moments of stress because of course there's going to be 
life will th- throw some, something at you or you'll have a really, um, you, you might have a goal in place that you do want to work towards and it's a bit stressful if you're setting up a new company or you've just become a, a parent for the first time. That's not going to be easy, is it? So you're going to have this this period where yeah, exactly. you're not acting in alignment with your values. You're just going to have to get through the days, the weeks, uh, whatever it is. And I think that's just, it's it's really good to hear because, of course, there are going to be moments of stress. Um, but it might be that that stress is a good thing because it's showing you that you're working towards something that's valuable and important. But then on the other hand, if you're noticing that that stress actually, well, it's not its not um, helping me towards my goals. It's not helping me become the person I want to be. It's not purposeful. So why am I getting st- so stressed out about this? Ah, This is a signal. Maybe I need to change course here. Yeah, no, I mean, you beautifully summarized it. I mean, <laughs> that's exactly what I keep saying all the time. So I'm so happy oh, to hear that it made Absolutely. sense to you. Absolutely. Well, Kieran, I've, I've, I've loved yeah. talking to you. Yeah. I really, really have because... Yeah, and I think it's just um, it's such a Likewise. well-timed conversation that this is something that I'm thinking so much about now. Um, and yeah, to, to have a conversation about values and purpose and stress and talk to someone um, with with the experience that you've got and the, and the background and the know-how, um, it was just really, really um, an absolute pleasure. So thank you so much for your time tonight. No, you're very welcome. I mean, I've completely enjoyed this conversation, especially to be able to speak openly and um, having somebody who can, like, you you were kind of giving your kind of own thoughts and stuff. So I really enjoyed the conversation and that it was like um, we were chatting to each other rather than like I'm just going about like, oh, because that's that's not how yeah. I wanted yeah, it to be. So it was great interview. talking to you as well <laughs> and sharing yeah, I'm trying to get better yeah. at that being a little, a little more vulnerable, a little more open and vulnerable. I think people, um, people appreciate hearing other people's stories, don't they? Because then they maybe feel less alone and they feel more like, oh, okay, other people are going through this. Mm. And this is what we have to do more of because we, we, not we like as in me and you, but in general, the projection out in there is that for somebody's world is perfect. And I think personally as a doctor and having this inner window into people's lives and knowing, okay, they are, you know, they have got everything and they're still having problems. It just helped me to think, actually, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the way everybody's seeing it. It it, it is, we, we all have to have, you know, go through life with problems which are unique for us. You know, my problems I had, you had your ones. It's not that we had life completely smooth ride and no kind of issues at all. And nobody challenged us in our days and (laughs) nobody's challenging us now. It's not perfect, but it's enjoyable. It's still worthwhile. It's still um, exciting, I say, you know, ups and downs. They are part of what we are meant to be. And even if you did nothing, for example, sometimes this is this is just for me, is because I wasn't expected to do anything in life, to be honest. I wasn't expected to be a doctor. I was supposed to be a housewife with kids and stuff. So for me to be able to share all these things means a lot. But at the same time, I know that if I don't share the problems I had and just share now what I am, people will get the false impression that it's easy. And that is also not the issue. The issue is that if they find a challenge, then they will think it's them and not the external circumstances. And that's what I want to take away from people is that it can be done, but you have to be fully prepared that it's going to be challenging. And you have to rise up to those challenges because because it's worth it. If I had just taken a back and I'm just like accepted, okay, this is my life. I'm just going to sit at home. I would have been, probably had all the things, the house, the car, husband and children. I still have it, touch wood, but I would have been not a happy wife, happy mom, happy doctor. And I had to put in a lot of work. And that work has 
been very worthwhile for me. I think that's a pretty good place to end it, isn't it, Kieran? <laughs> that's a very motivational way to, to end the conversation. That's really good to hear. Thank you for sharing. I do have three quick fire questions, though, to share with you, to, to ask you. Are you ready for them? Okay. <laughs> the <Let's> first go. <laughs> question. I'm not good at quick fire. <laughs> the first question is what's one lesson you wish you'd have been taught as a child? One lesson. Um, um, so, to be frankly honest, because it's an honest conversation, I did not have the best childhood, but it was what it was, and it's nobody's fault. I did not have glasses till I was in year four or five. Nobody picked up that I had short sightedness. And before that, I was a difficult child. And because I got the label of difficult child, I remained a difficult child. I think I was just not able to see the world around me. So I wasn't listening and paying attention. So that's something which makes me feel like if somebody is difficult, they are probably in difficulty. And I wish at that point somebody had thought, okay, no, no, she had problem. That's why she was not able to do the things we asked her to do. Not that she was trying to be, you know, problem problem child. So whenever I see a child as a doctor in difficult difficulty, I kind of see it in a different light. That okay, there may be something going on yeah, here. Everyone's got their story. I don't Absolutely. know whether this is the answer Absolutely. you wanted. Yeah, everyone's got their story, haven't they? And we're <laughs> so quick to judge, myself included. Just, no, I'm so impatient with people. And then actually you've just got to catch yourself, haven't you? Like, what is this person going through today? Yeah, they've just beeped at me in their car. Why are they so angry? Maybe they've got something really serious going on at home that if I had that happening to me, I'd be beeping my car as well. So just assume the best. Assume exactly. And while we're talking about glasses and vision, maybe I could give a, a quick shout out because in my school recently, um, we've had Villa Vision in, which is Aston Villa Football Club, their charity. They've brought in an optometrist and tested the eyesight of all the year five and six children. And then they flagged up certain children that might have to have another test. And if they, they if they definitely need to have glasses, they give them a pair of free glasses. So if you're around the Birmingham area, any listeners, Villa Vision, and I'm sure there are other kind of charities, organisations like that around the around the um, country that are helping because they, 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 like we can't even imagine, can we, what, what it's like to be a child. There are so many children that I've had throughout the years that are kind of squinting at the board and you're like, have you, have you had an eye test? And like, no, no, I've never been to the opticians. You're like, okay, like let's try and encourage, you know, we meet with mum or dad, to get, get to the op- it's called opticians and to get an eye test and yeah just makes the world of difference it does i mean i mean if, if you can't see but then or you can't see clearly yeah. or things are jumping around world. you or they're blurred yeah how exactly. are you going to navigate the world oh, yeah. right this was supposed to be quick fire karen <laughs> No, don't say sorry. Sorry, don't say sorry, sorry. The next one is, is there a, um, a habit that you've introduced into your life, maybe recently, that's helping you feel happier and healthier, or even a habit that you've got rid of? I think the main thing which I have um, taken on is that when I am feeling a little bit irritated or um, unsure, mm. then I take a pause. like what is happening here is it because i am hungry and dehydrated (laughs) or is it something i'm it's against it's not aligned with my values what is it so just taking that pause to reflect like why i am feeling irritated what what is causing me to feel grumpy here um how can i not you know make it obvious and look inside so it's more like a inner yeah, side shall we good. call it and the last one is if you could give everyone in the world one book which book would you give them well i have <laughs> looked at your previous podcast and i knew you were going to I'm ask prepared. me this i've got the book in front of me <laughs> and this is an old book okay 
Um, it's called the relaxation response. It's by a Harvard professor, um, Benson. I don't know if they've heard of him. So, so the, the best thing I as a doctor like about the book, that he is a professor of medicine. And this is written in, uh, I think, 1970s or let me have a look, 1974, yeah. And this was, this is still relevant because at, in those times, I think medicine was like, okay, we are going to, you know, give with the, come with the big guns. And he was one of the professors was like, okay, there is something called mind-body connection. Yes, we need the penicillin for the scarlet fever, but we need relaxation for the chronic illness. So he was the first one, and he has given some very good insights into um, how to initiate the relaxation response. It's very simple, and anybody can do it. And along with the physiology behind it, uh, as a doctor, I like to know the reason why I'm asking somebody to do something, especially biological and physiological reasons. And one other thing which I really like about this book is this um, adverse event index. Uh, Have you heard of that? Adverse event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, index. So how an adverse if how much the scale of impact is. So it's here. I can I don't know if you can see it. So for example, if if an if scale of impact, so change in the health of family member has an impact of 44, say out of 100. Uh death of a close friend is 37, divorce is 73. So he has scored the scale of impact of what different stressful events in life can have and then having an approach according to that it's like a um a, a just like you know if you are going through a big change in life versus something like problem on your vacation or <laughs> trouble with in-laws he says or wife begins or stops work i don't know if that's 1974 <laughs> <laughs> uh, then the stress it'll have will be different. That's what he does. I'm not saying it's 100% correct because things have changed on a bit, but it's good to know like what type of stress can yeah, affect yeah. us in and, what and way. Adjust your response accordingly because if it is if, if that kind of big response yeah, that yeah, would be understandable yeah. to have, then what are we going to, what, what could we put in place? Interesting. Yeah. Exactly. So, for example, if somebody loses their parent and that's such a common thing, it's a sad thing. Sometimes yeah, people are just expected yeah. to move not on. Not given that time to grieve. Because it's so common, but but it's it's not the same for everybody. I have had people in my clinics who have not adjusted to loss of their mom or dad even after a few years and some others who have moved on after six months. So it can't be like generalized any of these things. We We have to just understand that the impact of stress according to the level, has to be, um, I can't say prescribed, but, but but we have to give them that yeah. same amount of support. Right. Where can people find you? How can they connect with you? Um, your website, if they're interested in knowing more about the work that you do and the coaching, where, where can people find you? So at the moment, I'm on LinkedIn and Dr. Kiran Agarwal. Um, I'm a coach. I'm available if you if anybody thought that they need a little bit of pickup or coaching or talking through things. Um, I do have a website, it's the same name, drkiranagawal.co.uk. Um, I usually, you know, go through the process as an individualized. I don't like generalizing things as said, because I find that these are the challenges which have to be dealt in a more one-to-one fashion. Um it's good to have the community vibes and the group kind of, you know, stuff, but that's more for the vibes rather than sorting the problem. Interesting. Right. Thank you again for your time this evening. Really, really. This was a, this was a pleasure. Thank you, Kira. No, you're welcome. <laughs> no, I enjoyed talking to you, Sam. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for tuning in. I really hope you found my conversation with Kieran insightful. If you enjoyed the episode, please do share it with friends, family and colleagues who you think would find it helpful too. 
And again, you can support the podcast by following and rating the show on whichever app you're listening on. Thank you. And I look forward to bringing you another episode soon.